Hi everyone, I'm Scott Feinberg, awards analyst for The Hollywood Reporter. I'm here with Stephen Galloway, our features editor, and thank you for joining us for this week's edition of The Hollywood Reporters from the newsroom of The Hollywood Reporter. And today we're previewing the 85th Oscar nominations, which are gonna be announced on Thursday morning. To begin with, we're gonna look at the acting categories, and then in another video, we're gonna delve into the best picture race. So please be sure to check out both. Steven, as one of the most avid uh, and informed other Oscar <laughs> watchers in the <laughs> office, if we can, I'd like to go category by category and just see where we disagree. To begin with the Best Supporting Actress race, everybody seems to feel there are three slam dunks. Anne Hathaway for Les Miserables, Sally Field for Lincoln, and Helen Hunt for The Sessions. Then most people are still giving Amy Adams the benefit of the doubt for The Master because she's Amy Adams. She seems to show up in this category every other year. But that fifth slot is a problem because there's a lot of people who have somewhat of a shot, but no slam dunk. It's a very difficult one because I always think that there's one unexpected person in each category. And so I'm going to plunk myself down and say it's Anne Dowd from Compliance, simply because the people who love that movie really love it and they adore her. I can't tell you how much I hope you're right and I'm wrong in this case. I'm not totally sure that the movie ever got as high a profile as it needed for this to happen. I am going to go with Jackie Weaver for sort of the opposite reason in the sense that her movie was seen by everybody. She was nominated two years ago for Animal Kingdom. I'm saying she'll get in. She is a truly wonderful actress. I think she, there are two factors you have to weigh in. One is because she made such a mark in Animal Kingdom, this will seem less spectacular by comparison. The second factor is, remember, the DVDs have gone out from compliance, and that will help and out. If we're both wrong, it could conceivably be Nicole Kidman, who was nominated for The Paperboy by both SAG and The Globes. She's kind of playing over-the-top blousy, right. where you can see she's acting somebody other than who right. she is. And I think when people not seem to be acting, in other words, when they're so Subtle, good, right, right. Dan Keaton, for instance, it can actually hurt them. You think, well, that's just who she is. Right. And that doesn't help. It's true. And uh, the final sort of person on the radar in this category who we might want to keep an eye on, Maggie Smith for The Best Exotic Marigold Hotel, did get the SAG nomination, but has done no campaigning because at this point in her life, I don't think she gives a crap about any of this. And again, there are two factors that might hurt her here. One is that she's going to split the vote with Judy Dench. And the other factor is that with Downton Abbey, she's had so much glory that, okay, she did this nice film too, but, but that is going to make people sort of overlook this. Plus, the characters, that she, the, the Dowager Countess and this character are essentially the same acerbic, you know, bitter older woman. And well, so, well, this is what we play in England. You know, we are all <laughs> acerbic, bitter older women. So, uh, well, that's you know, a, you trot out role number 99 if you've grown up in British rest. And it's, okay, the servant, the you know, <laughs> a butler. So. Right. Okay, that brings us to Best Supporting Actor, and it's actually a very similar dynamic. There are four that everybody seems to feel are in, those being Tommy Lee Jones for Lincoln, uh, Alan Arkin for Argo, Philip Seymour Hoffman for The Master, and Robert De Niro for Silver Linings Playbook. And then we again find ourselves having to come up with a fifth. So who, in the end, gets your prediction for the fifth slot? Matthew McConaughey for Magic Mike. I think actors identify with somebody who emerges late. Expectations being low, he delivered phenomenally, and I think could be rewarded. And that's actually, even just last year, that was the case with Jonah Hill for Moneyball. It you're absolutely right that it happens. Like Correct, that. it happens. My heart belongs to Dwight Henry oh, sure. from Beast of the Sun Wild. And I think he's been hurt by the fact that he's not a professional actor. Mm -hmm. And so people assume that is just him, it must be done in the editing. Right. And of course, when you meet him, you realize just how different he is. Right. But I do think that McConaughey will reap the reward of a career in front of the camera. And not just a career, but a fantastic year. Not only Magic Mike, Killer Joe, Bernie, the paper boy. I mean, nobody's done more this year. But at the end of the day, while I could see that possibly happening, and it would be an Academy first, the male stripper uh, nominated for... <laughs> there should be a category that's, for that's that. Right. Well, yeah. sir, there's a constituency for that, I'm sure. But I'm going to say... Javier Bardem for Skyfall, which would be historic in its own way. There has never, in 50 years of James Bond movies, been a actor from a James Bond movie nominated for that performance. Here's a guy who's been in films like Vicky Cristina Barcelona, won the Oscar for No, no Country, Country for Old Men, and so he has that standard to compare himself to. Also, I think that, you know, 
whether he'll be punished or rewarded for this, I'm not sure, but it is along the lines of that uh, Anton Chigurh that he won the Oscar for in No Country for Old Men, this sort of twisted, sadistic villain. And if you think about the last few winners, there was also Heath Ledger for The Dark Knight, mm -hmm. uh, which obviously had its extenuating circumstances. But uh, a number of villains have won in that category. And it could, at the end of the day, be neither of our picks, but rather Eddie Redmayne for Les Mis, or one of the two great support, one of three great supporting actor performances in Django Unchained, where you've got Christoph Waltz, Leonardo DiCaprio, and Samuel L. Jackson. But again, their problem is they probably eat into each they other's. They split the vote. Right. And, and in some ways, Christoph Waltz is so dominating right. that you feel he should be in the lead category. Absolutely. And the others who I think give wonderful performances just split each other's votes. And they pale in comparison to him when you right. see the screen time exactly. and all of that. I, I think of those, Waltz has the best chance. Okay, so up next is Best Actress, and in keeping with the theme of all of this, we agree on four, and then we find a problem with uh, a disagreement over the fifth. Um, the four that we agree on, Jennifer Lawrence, Silver Linings Playbook, Naomi Watts, The Impossible, Marion Cotillard, Rustin Bone, and Emmanuel Riva Amor, who, if she is nominated, will become the oldest Best Actress nominee in all of history. Wow. So at 85 years old. Now, you believe that we will also have another record set in this category, which is that we will have the youngest Best Actress Oscar nominee in history with... I would love to see Quivenge Jene Wallace, the young girl from Beasts of the Southern Wild, nominated. I think there's been a subtle bad-mouthing behind the scenes of uh, you know, they fed her lines right. and things like that. Exactly. People forget that she was five or six years old when she played the part. And it is one of the most memorable characters and performances of the year. Absolutely, and it will upset a lot of people if she is not nominated, including me, because I agree, I think she totally deserves to be there. However, some people feel you've got, you're not, they're not really voting based only on that one performance, but it's sort of a body of work issue. Like with Naomi Watts, she's great in The Impossible, but I think it's as much about her and her, and her body and of I work. And I don't agree with you at all. Uh, I might in normal circumstances. She's simply spectacular okay. in the film and that's why she's getting it. Well, I hope, I mean, I, I believe she will be nominated. The one where you have Quivenjene, I have Jessica Chastain for Zero Dark Thirty. I feel like uh, she will get, get the in. She'll get fifth spot. Uh, and, and I, I think wouldn't he, even say the fifth, because this is yes, yes. I put her very high. Yeah. I think it's between her and Lawrence for the win. You feel that it would be who for the... who? For well, I think it's a very tough category. Right. And I think Lawrence is the front runner, and I actually think that Naomi Watts is. Could. But, uh, you know, whatever our critical judgments of of the film, which right. I like very much. Right. Right. For me, its weakness was the thinness of that character. Interesting. The people that we did not mention yet who have a shot, certainly Helen Mirren, she got the Globe and the SAG nomination. You gotta pay attention to people who pull that off. And then two people who got Globe nominations, Rachel Weisz for The Deep Blue Sea and Judy Dench for Best Exotic Marigold Hotel. Although I think they have different handicaps. Uh, Rachel Weisz's movie was not high profile, didn't necessarily get seen by tons of people. Um, Judy Dench, her movie Although, was seen, but, yes. but did not, uh, it was so long ago. Yeah. And just one final addendum for actress, Meryl Streep, she was in a movie that was not necessarily up to her normal standards, even her own performance, Hope Springs, and yet, despite no campaign, there are some people who are still gonna vote for that, and it will be an amazing thing if with no work at all, that somehow does get in, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't bet much on that happening. This brings us to the best actor category, and there are five who are sort of above the rest. Those being Daniel Day-Lewis for Lincoln, John Hawks for The Sessions, Denzel Washington for Flight, Bradley Cooper, Silver Linings Playbook, and Hugh Jackman for Les Miserables. Now the question is, if they and we, who agree with those picks, are wrong, who might sneak in there? I am still shocked that Joaquin Phoenix is not in even our choice for the five nominees. It's heartbreaking that an actor this good, getting the best performance he's ever delivered, is just a maybe, yeah. even in our minds. There are three crucial factors. One is, I loved the film. Yeah. A lot of people didn't. They found it cold, they found the end trailed off. Yeah. All things that I actually quite liked about it, yeah. they didn't. The second thing is when you play a fairly dislikable character and you don't make him likable, it affects people. Mm -hmm. And he did that. And the third, you sure as hell had better be campaigning. <laughs> That's right. If and you're not Daniel, insulting the Academy. Right. Right. Now, he may get in there, and if he does, who do you feel of the five that we're picking is the most vulnerable? I think Bradley, maybe because it's a comedy, and so maybe doesn't quite seem to have the gravitas 
of some of the other roles. And I would, I would agree with that. I would also say Hugh Jackman, who's never been in a great movie before, this is a role that was sort of perfect for him, but uh, he, he, may, he may be the other guy who's in a little bit of trouble. I think you're wrong on this. I'm not uh, saying Jackman won't be, right. I'm just saying he's, he's not. I think uh, that's unlikely to happen. Again, I, I think there's almost always a surprise. Right. Les Miserables split people, they either love it right. or they hate it. Right. But if they love it, they love they really Hugh love Jackman. Right. So maybe the guy who's actually the most vulnerable is the one that everybody likes but not too many people love, which is Denzel Washington in flight. I think the spot is Bradley. Right. Uh, you think the spot could be Hugh Jackman right. or Denzel. Well, we're just, we're, right. we're basically saying... Although we basically think those are... It's everybody but, Dan I think the complete that we would be just baffled if they didn't get in would be Daniel Day-Lewis and John Hawks. I, I agree with Everybody you. But, else, but I would be also uh, stunned if, if Denzel, Denzel doesn't get it. Right. Because he is adored by people as a performer. And look, he puts it out there in that role. Right. True. The one guy who I think it would be shocking to a lot of people to see him in there, but I think he deserves to be in there, would be Jack Black for Bernie, who has been not only great in the movie, but... He's done the work on the campaign trail as well. And then the wild cards are Jamie Foxx for Django Unchained, who, you know, unfortunately, he's sort of like the Mark Wahlberg in The Fighter. It's just everybody else around you has good things to do. You're it a takes great modesty as an actor to hold back, right. which he did. And therefore, the part was very believable. But people like a little flash and sizzle. Yep. Uh, and, you know, if he had the drunken scenes of flight right. or the whiskers of Lincoln, right. uh, he, he might be in there. He held back. It was very restrained and perfect parallel to Mark Wahlberg. He made that film work without letting people see it. In my world, you got to get dirty. So that's what I'm doing. I'm getting dirty. We hope that you will continue to follow our awards coverage both in print and online at THR.com slash the race. And so that's it for this. And then in another video, we're going to delve into the best picture race. So please be sure to check out both. Mm -hmm.